Today we're gonna make a 100 amp hour battery box out of this Harbor Freight Apache 3800 case and this Watt Cycle Mini 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. Let's get to it. Now some of the major components we're gonna use in this battery box. Obviously we have the Watt Cycle Mini 100 amp hour battery. Any of these mini lithium iron phosphate batteries that are coming out and flooding the market right now should work in these. Uh, I'm gonna be using a Genesun 10 amp solar charge controller. We're gonna have solar built into this. I'm gonna use this fuse block here that has positive and negative. This way I can just make direct runs to all the components uh, without having to put a bunch of other switches. Generally, I use these little 20 amp switches and everything has a single switch uh, per component, but because I had this 120 amp fuse breaker lying around, I decided I'm just gonna use this guy as kind of the master switch. I don't really care so much about the current rating or the fuse breaking capabilities of this, but it's a 120 amp uh, breaker slash switch. And then obviously all these are gonna be uh, fused as well. This is this breaker or fuse block has, a, it's a, rated for 100 amps and then 30 amps per uh, circuit there. I've also 3D printed some Anderson power pole housings or, or outlets, whatever you wanna call these. And we're gonna be using the Droke battery meter. This is the uh, uh, battery capacity manager, they call it. I did a review on this uh, a few months ago. And we're also gonna have uh, some USB-C PD and a USB-A uh, QC 3.0. So uh, other than that, just some spade connectors and 10 gauge wire and stuff. So let's start making it happen. So I've already figured out where I want everything. And I've decided that I want the breaker right here. Just securing this with some Velcro. Same thing with the fuse box here. should work. And then I'm going to put the charge controller right on the side like that. Beautiful. Now we just need to perform some surgery on our Harbor Freight Apache case. I've already marked out where everything is going to go. Our meter is going to go here. My USB will go there. And then on the other side, I've got marks here for where the Anderson power poles are going to go. So we're just going to drill out a pilot hole. And then we'll use this step bit that I've marked from previous projects as to how big or wide these all need to be. So that should be pretty easy. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a bit that drills a square, so for cutting out the meter, I'm gonna use a handy dandy razor blade. I'm just gonna cut on the inside of the line a little bit. Just wanna kinda score it first. Go a little bit smaller than the meter is, that way you can shave out more if and when it's too small, but if you make it too big, that is no bueno. Once you make a few scores, you can just kind of force the knife in. And that's probably not the right size, but we can shave it, yeah, we can shave it down a little bit. Needs to be a little bit taller and just a touch wider. And we can just kind of gradually shave off tiny little bits of plastic until we get it right. And after a bit of fine tuning and carving, we've got something that closely resembles a rectangle. And now our meter fits. All right, let's start wiring things up. I'm gonna start by connecting the negative to 
our circuit box or our fuse box. And I made this little lead here with some ring connectors. So we can go ahead and attach the negative terminal. The washer on top, lock washer, and our little nut. I'm also gonna connect the battery and the panel connections to the charge controller. So we're gonna connect the battery side first. So I've made a couple wiring harnesses with some spade connectors on one side and these ferrules on the other. And we're simply going to slide the negative ferrule in there for the battery negative. Go ahead and close this up. And we'll do the same thing for the positive. This whole bus bar here is all the negatives and these three on top and bottom are our positives. So we'll go ahead and screw the negative spade from the charge con controller to our negative bus bar. And same thing with the positive. There. Now we can install the solar panel input and our first power pole, which is gonna be this further back one. So we can go ahead and put our power poles through the hole and insert them into the housing, if you have it the right way, like such. Then we're gonna slide this back in. And there's a little hole in these power pole housings where I'm gonna use a little tiny piece of wire, which is actually this, it's this plastic coated steel wire, and that's what's gonna hold the power poles in place. So we kinda of just drop it in, and then we can screw on the back, like such. Then we'll attach our wires to the power poles, negative to the negative bus bar and the positive to the positive. And then we'll attach the negative panel connection to the charge controller and the positive from the panel. And now we can go ahead and install our second batch of power poles. Thusly, and get our little wire guy. I got this wire at Ace Hardware, by the way. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier. Let's see, that wire just prevents everything from coming out. And then again, we can attach our positive leads from the power poles to our fuse box. and our negatives. Now we can go ahead and install and wire up our USB and our watt meter. The USB thing here has a little plus and minus. The plus is the gold, the minus is the silver. So we'll go ahead and put that in. Go ahead and lock that down. And we'll take our negative connection and our positive, and we'll connect the negative to the negative side of the bus bar, and the positive to the positive, just like that. Now we can go ahead and wire up our meter, and we're gonna take our ribbon cable and attach it to the meter thusly. Put that back in. And the ribbon cable is going to connect to the shunt like such. And then we need to connect the negative. So here's the load side. So we're going to connect from the fuse block to the load. And then here where it says battery, we're going to connect it directly to the battery, which is what I screwed up earlier. So this way, all the negative load goes through the bus bar and back into the battery. And that's how that works. And then we'll install 
the wire from the battery to the battery side of the bus bar, like such. Go ahead and tighten these down. All right. Then we have one last wire to connect for that. And that's gonna be this little guy, just a spade to a ferrule. And underneath here, right there, is where you plug the positive wire into the shunt. And that just gives it power. Just like that. Where'd that little screwdriver go? And then tighten her down. And connect that to the positive of our fuse box. That's all wired up. Go ahead and crank this guy down. And now our meter is totally wired. And the last bit of wiring is to connect the positive to the breaker. So we'll take our lug with the positive side. And the connector there. And we'll do the same thing for the load side. Washer, lock washer, nut. And then we just need to add our fuses. So we've got a 10 amp solar charge controller, so I'm gonna put a 15 amp fuse in there. I'm also gonna put a 15 amp fuse for our USB, five amps for our voltmeter, and then all of our power poles are gonna get 30 amp fuses. Then we can put our cover on our fuse block, like that, and doesn't that look pretty? Then I'll add a couple zip ties to all these cables just to tidy things up a little bit. Now we can lay our battery down. Add our foam to the top. And now I realized I hated where I put the fuse breaker, so I moved it over here so I can simply reach under, flip the switch and turn it on. When I'm done, push the switch, turn it off. So let me show you around this baby. On the business end, we have three Anderson power pull outs all hooked up to a 30 amp fuse. We've got the black and yellow for our Genesun charge controller solar input. We've got a handsome carrying handle there. Now we have our USB-C PD and our beautiful, beautiful meter there. And this meter is awesome. It tells you the state of charge, the voltage, the current that it's either being consumed or charged. And the best thing is this will count down in amp hours when you're using battery power and it will go up when you're charging. So check this out. Let's plug in a USB here and I'll just plug in my little anchor portable battery bank there. And you can see we're pulling 11 volts 11.7 volts at three amps, 35 watts, 2.96 amps there, 39 watts, so very close. But if I plug a charger in, I've got a six amp charger that I just plugged in. Now you can see we're getting plus three amp hours in, or three amps rather, and we're still charging. And when that's fully charged, that'll get back to 100%, saying we got about 30 seconds until it's fully charged. This is awesome. That meter is basically why I wanted to build this box. And it even has a little protective cover you can put on so the kids can't mess with the buttons. It's great. And now there's only one final thing to do. 